Hello everybody, so I kind of wanted to make an update on my personal endeavors because I had a very interesting couple of weeks. I spoke at Liberty Camp 2013, which was sort of a libertarian conference put on by a German foundation called the Frederick Newman Foundation for Freedom. Uh, it was really cool. I spoke about Bitcoin to students from Poland, Belarus, and Ukraine. Uh, the other speakers were really interesting people. Uh, one in particular, Yaroslav Romanchuk, was a former presidential candidate in Belarus. Now, it is a very dangerous thing to be a, you know, a past, present, or future presidential candidate in Belarus. He had a lot of great stories, and I'm sorry I didn't have more time, more time to talk to him. Hopefully, I'll, I'll meet him again. Um, it was, uh, the, the conference was near Lviv in a gorgeous resort, and perhaps my favorite part were the volleyball games that, that followed the, the lecture. Uh, they got really competitive. I haven't played those, I, I haven't played sports that got that intense in, in a while. It was, it was a lot of fun, really competitive, and we, we all went swimming in the lake, so awesome time. Uh, second thing, writing. I have for probably years now uh, been dying to get back to, to writing a memoir about my third combat tour, uh, the tour in Afghanistan's Kunar province. Uh, but I've always been waiting for my life to just kind of be perfect. I just kind of wanted to put everything in order and get rid of uh, you know all possible distractions and focus on this memoir. And I haven't been able to. And I heard about Kickstarter not too long ago. And I thought it'd be it'd be cool to try that. Then I heard about BitStarter. I thought it'd be even cooler to try that because you know it's good for Bitcoin, and I like Bitcoin. I want to support it. And then I had an even crazier idea. Uh, instead of just straight up crowdfunding, just straight up asking for philanthropy, why not sell shares of this creative project? You know, why not essentially issue stock in this in this or virtual stock? in this project and then you know people who support me have a chance of of getting a return on their money now it should be regarded as mostly philanthropy because books are, are risky endeavors but I'm also a damn good writer and this this isn't my first book I have I have a uh, I have a story in this wonderful anthology fire and forget I have a story in another anthology and I, I have uh, I have this book which I wrote with uh, Dr. Yuri Maltsev about the tea parties, which is coming out in a bigger and better form with a bigger and better publisher uh, in October under the uh, title of Tea Party, the Tea Party Explained. But anyway, so so I corresponded with the owner of uh, of, of several stock exchanges, including BTCT, uh, and he was super supportive. Uh, Ethan Burnside, if I remember his name correctly. He's an American entrepreneur who actually did all the trouble of organizing this stock exchange as a business based in Belize, where there's less regulatory burden. And, um, you know, Bitcoin is opening up new economic opportunities. You know, what used to take a million dollars, an army of lawyers, and who knows, maybe a year's time, now takes a week. Uh, you know, no lawyers at all, and uh, and just their their website fee. And it was awesome. The owners of the website voted on my security, and it eventually, after some conversations with the no voters, uh, they eventually got it improved, and and it's up. I issued 400 shares representing 40% ownership of this endeavor. So each share represent a tenth of a percent of future profits, and. And it's up, man. It's happening. I kept most of the shares I issued myself, but I, I, I sold about a quarter of them, and and someone bought them, and and they're trading, and and this is just so exciting. Um, it's it's awesome. You know why not sell shares of a creative endeavor instead of straight up crowdfunding? That's right. There's no good reason at all. Uh, so I'm doing it. I'm blazing a trail, and and I'm gonna finish on this uh, on the website for the book. And then, and then I'm going to make my life all about writing like I've been meaning to do for, for years. Uh, you can check, check it out. At, the working title of the book is War for Anarchists. And please check it out. 
war or war the number four anarchist.com war the number four anarchist.com uh, so the third thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, how I spent my Saturday night and in doing so I'm gonna betray to you what a gigantic nerd I can be when I get interested in in something it started Saturday afternoon when I just wanted to answer a very simple question how does the supply of all the bitcoins compare to the or the value of all the bitcoins compared to the value of different national currencies really simple right um, uh, so I looked for a list of national currencies expressed in some common denomination like gold or euros or dollars and I couldn't find it much to my chagrin so I thought I would calculate it myself I did find data on on the World Bank website of all different countries reporting their M2 monetary supply uh, in their local currency so so I used that most of the data is from 2012 some of it goes all the way back to uh, 2008 and some of it isn't imported Im reported at all but the vast majority of countries are on there uh, and then I just used uh, official exchange rates I actually took a, a concise list from the United Nations website and I crunched the numbers and the result is absolutely fascinating to look at you get you just see what all the all the different monetary supplies are worth uh, did you know that euros were number one all the euros in the world are worth almost 22 trillion dollars the United States is not number two they're number three uh, China all of China's money it's called the renminbi uh, it's worth almost 16 trillion dollars and all the dollars are uh, a little over 14 trillion dollars uh, Japan is next uh, all the yen Japanese yen uh, 11.7 trillion and then the euros are broken up by country Germany 6 trillion France four and a quarter uh, United Kingdom 3.9 Italy 3.4 trillion Spain 2.6 then his Canadian money is about two trillion dollars all the way down Russia is a little less than a trillion Brazil is one and a half trillion uh, Switzerland 1.2 trillion Hong Kong uh, I didn't realize that they had their own money it's a uh, point point nine trillion so get getting back to the original question where is Bitcoin uh, when I when I crunched these numbers uh, the Bitcoin was uh, about hundred twelve dollars that comes out 1.29 billion and is favorably comparable meaning a, a little bit better than a little bit more valuable than all the money of countries like Belize El Salvador Tajikistan so we're on the map baby bitcoins are real I also included Litecoin in this analysis and all the Litecoins are worth 55 million dollars which is about half of the world's least valuable monetary supply which is uh, the supply of the island nations Sao Tome and Principe uh, which I believe are in the the African Gulf the uh, Gulf of Guiana is it called um, yeah so there you have it and then I had an even more interesting idea um, I thought I thought of uh, of, com of calculating trust I thought of this this method of calculating trust you can compare you can add up all the pieces of paper right all the dollars dinars lira euro rubles all the various notes just add them up make a big aggregate and then compare for any money compare their percentage of notes with their percentage of value uh, let me illustrate that with an example uh, Vietnam's currency is called the dong d-o-n-g and they they have a lot of pa paper or else a lot of zeros on their paper so because the Vietnamese dong accounts for about 25 percent of all the paper that's out there but that paper only accounts for about 0.15 percent of the value so using my little my little arithmetic which is uh, you know the 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 latter number over the former number they they come out with a really low trust factor Europe's euros are almost the exact converse they they represent about 0.15 percent of the paper and 25 percent of the value so they they have a really high trust factor um, I, I, I just got so excited about this idea I kept massaging the numbers and and uh, I had some bad data in there Zamib Zambia or Zambia they they changed their currency recently so uh, I had a I had to fix a few things and I spent all Saturday night looking at this data and uh, so let's talk about the trust factors 
I, I'm really excited. It, it seems like an obvious way to, to, to measure trust, at least have a rudimentary measure of trust. Although it, it's, I don't have complete confidence uh, in it. I, I, I want to write an article about it, but I first want to ask my friend uh, Leo Krasnohan, who's at George Mason University, professional economist. Uh, he runs the wonderful, wonderful uh, website, uh, Ukraine Watch, ukrainewatch.blogspot.com. And I had the pleasure of meeting him when he passed through Lviv a couple weeks ago. Uh, so so I asked him, like, hey, am I doing anything stupid? Uh, you know, is this is this nonsense or what? I don't think it is. But I want to just get, get a second opinion before I write an article about it. Uh, so the most trusted is Bitcoin by far. Are, uh, Bitcoin's trust factor is 14,550. Next is not Litecoin. Next is the Kuwaiti dinar, the most trusted fiat money in the world. Uh, trust factor of 455. Litecoin 356. And the Bahraini dinar, Oman, uh, the Latvian money, that was a surprise. And the British pound with a trust factor of 198. The euro has 172, Swiss franc 139.7, U.S. dollar trust factor of almost 130. Fascinating, right? Uh, I was also curious which country had the most proportional trust factor, meaning they had they, their currency represents X percent of paper and also X percent of value. And, and there were two countries uh, that stood out, Sri Lanka and Iceland, the most proportional money in terms of uh, percent of paper, percent of value. Least trusted were Iran, Vietnam, uh, Sao Tome, and Principe, those two little islands uh, off, the, off the west coast of Africa uh, with the tiny monetary supply. Then Indonesia, Belarus, Laos, Paraguay, Sierra Leone, Cambodia, Uganda. Yeah, and that's that. Now, I, I am going to wait for a second opinion before I write a little article about this, but if you want to get the scoop, I'm going to I'll put a link to this spreadsheet in the notes so check it out play with the numbers have fun measuring the trust of money selling stocks in books and talking about bitcoin at liberty camp thanks for watching and stay tuned